Your hair looks different today. I like it. I had to wear the same short haircut for years. My foster mother didn't want to have to brush it. As soon as I left home, I decided to grow it long. Vanilla. And then, almost right away, I discovered that I could be courageous. And I could have purpose. And I could be loved. And I stopped drinking and cutting. I'd probably be dead if I hadn't made that decision. Sometimes I forget what awful things I used to think. I love you. What did you say? What? What? Were you listening to me? Well, yeah, of, of course. I probably should have kept that to myself. No, no, I, I understand the awful things our brains can think up when we haven't seen many things that aren't awful. I, I stopped thinking about those things, too. You yeah. have? Yeah. After Theo? No. Pretty recently, actually. Oh. Uh, how many questions you got left? Finn, are you developing feelings for me? Do you have feelings for me? Mr. Breslin. You do. I think that you do. Finn. You, I hate that name. <laughs> the name Theo gave me when I was officially adopted. Named me after Finn McCool, Irish folklore legend. <laughs> he was a, a warrior, a good guy. He used to tell us about him before bed. It just really ruined it for me. What about your name? Leon's my married name. My foster parents gave me Sadie. I was named after Sadie Martineau. She was an actress in New York, an opera singer. My foster mother's mother loved her. I all hoped I'd be a talented singer like her. I wasn't. I didn't realize you were married. Widowed, actually. You ever thinking about changing it, your name? No. Do you? Nah. Finn. You keep saying my name. <laughs> yes. Because you're falling for me? Have you wondered yet why we're here? Well, a, a book, right? No. Warden Roth is doing me a favor. Well, it's for both of us, actually. All right. And we both work for the state. And he finds your past as interesting as I do. I interesting? Unimaginable. I thought you kept coming back because you liked my face. Okay. That's okay. What? 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 What I do? What? what? No more questions? What? Hey, tell me about Leonard. Tell me. What'd he do? He shoot himself? He bleed out in the tub like a fucking woman? That fucking prick. That weak, useless fucking prick. You know what? Fuck it. What is wrong with you? There are cameras! Guards, don't you ever do that again or I will never come back here! We're fine. And don't you ever, ever, Talk about Leonard like that. He was a good man. The best. And you talk about him like that? He loved you. 
He loved you. And you talk about him like that? What? What? What, what are you saying? Oh, I get it. You're the nice girl. We, we had plans. We had plans after Hunts. We were gonna live. And you took him from me. Dr. Leon. Leonard. Alexander. Leon. He loved you. He used to talk about you all the time. He had your picture in his wallet. I hated it. The warden, then Dr. Roth, um, was seeing Leonard as a patient for years. He was obviously very helpful. I started thinking about killing myself the day that Leonard left. I started killing them after Leonard left. Stop talking. The warden's starting a program. It's a reformatory program. There's gonna be special housing, a library, special services, counseling. It's revolutionary. And being that you're serving several consecutive life sentences, technically you're not eligible. But the warden is willing to make an exception on my recommendation. But if there is any indication that you are suicidal or violent towards others, then he and I cannot help you. And I've taken a position as a full-time counselor. So I'd be seeing you, like, regularly? Maybe. Do I have your recommendation? Are you going to kill yourself? Are you going to wear your pumps? Are you going to behave and do the work? Yeah. Don't kill yourself, Mr. Breslin. Nearly 10 years together. 10 years of trying to be better people than we were. Leonard told me he felt resolve and that he wasn't ashamed anymore about the rapes and the abuse. He said he'd noticed that he'd stopped thinking about those types of things. I started keeping the knives in the kitchen again. I wanted children and grandchildren a garden and lots of lazy mornings with sweet coffee. We wanted those things. He had promised me those things. I'd gone to the bakery to get goodies that morning. We felt like spoiling ourselves. Or maybe that was just me. By the time I came back, he was gone. Floating in his blood. The radio was playing, the tea kettle was screaming and the letter he wrote me was drenched and smeared on the floor. Lenny couldn't get past it, and I couldn't make him forget.